somebody judging how you pray. Hallelujah. Look at your person next to you and say, nobody's going to judge me this morning. Now, we overuse that in the kingdom of God. Judge, judge, judge. Well, Jesus judged. He told us to judge as, as people of God. I mean, come on. But being overcritical is what we should say. So I, I just wonder if there's five more people in the building that can stand up and follow my direction. Can you stand up if you feel like it? I know some of us is with child. <laughs> Kids in the county. I wish I knew the steps, but we're going to step a little bit this morning. All right? Move with me just a little bit. We're not going to be too difficult, but we got to rise. And sometimes we want God to rise in us. And we just don't know how we are supposed to be used. Have you ever felt that way, David? How am I supposed to be used? Where am I supposed to go? How am I supposed to move? Well, I'm going to give you some direction this morning. And this is just a figurative an example of how God is going to move in your life this season. All right? Say, I'm ready for him to move this season. I'm ready for him to move this season. Okay, after they repeat after me, we're going to move with me, all right? I ain't danced in a long time. All right, all right, all right. I don't know how to dance no more. I feel a little Latin beat coming on, Brother Mike. <laughs> Let him move. Come on, let's move. Let him move this way.
offering time. Somebody said it's offering time. Thank you for pressing your way. We got a few people that really shouldn't have pressed their way out, but they answered the call and the request because we're shorthanded this morning. We got two, one out of town. Pray for the Ties family. Pray for the others that are gone this morning. We thank you for pressing your way out and working in the vineyard. We thank you for being here. Now, we're going to ask you to get in your mind the fact that you can't be God giving. Get it in your heart, and then now we're going to try, amen, because we got God's heart. We got God's heart. We're man and woman after God's own heart. So we're going to do what God put on our heart, amen, amen. Pay your rent, buy your groceries, amen. But if God put extra on your heart this morning, go a little extra, amen. Mm. I didn't know I was going to sing that song. That's the first time I tried to sing the verse in this church, or maybe ever. Amen. And we got it done. We uh, praise God for Sister Cynthia McCallum that usually does the heavy lifting on that song. But God is good. And that's part of the sermon. I didn't realize I was doing that. In the midnight hour, at night, he's going to work. We, don't we want God to work? We want God to work. Amen. We're not going to stay here long today. But God can do more with a few minutes than we can do all day. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to ask for the Holy Ghost to come down this morning. As you give, as you follow the direction of uh, Sister Tiffany White, who's not supposed to be here. But put your hands together and say thank God for Sister Tiffany this morning. Sister LaDonna, Sister Kim, Sister Raina. I think everybody needed to call in. I told my wife to stay home. I said, you stay home. Put together for First Lady. Amen. God is good. Amen. I'm about ready to print some flyers out, and we're going to start canvassing this neighborhood, knock on doors. Amen. And reach the people of God. There's sheep out there, but they got to hear. we got to be able to be a voice for God. Amen. Can you bring me those two on the front row, those two talents there? Uh, either one, thank you, thank you. So we're going to start witnessing as this church. Because this is a great church. Do you believe it? Yeah. Do you believe it? Yeah. Sister, uh, you didn't plan on it. Can you pray for the offering? Sister, can you pray for the offering? Are you up here now? Amen. Go on and put your hands on the offering. Sister Tiffany, and just say a little prayer. Amen. Father God, in heaven, we thank you today. We thank you for the I'm the resurrection. 
situation in their life. God is good. Let's just say hallelujah because he's our life. He's our resurrection. He's our power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's our resurrection and our life. When it looks like there might not be anybody on our side, when it looks like your situation might be dying, you might be giving up, your circumstance or your venture, your business venture, your morale might be failing, you think. Think about Jesus and all that he's done for you. Your souls should cry out, hallelujah. He is my, he's my resurrection and he's my resurrection and my life. God is so, so good. So Martha and Mary was begging, they was believing in Jesus. They was mad at him or frustrated. They just was. They said, if you had been here, Martha said it first, and then Mary said it again. If you just had been here. Wow. Now, not putting God directly in it, in our, in our uh, uh, history, in our past, but have you ever felt like if you just would have made a different decision, things would have worked differently? Have you ever felt like just if you would have prayed more, not went on that date with you know who? I don't know. You know. And if you did, you felt like if you just would have had somebody there when you needed them friend or family member, things would have turned out better than it did. Have you ever felt that way? If you felt that way, we don't have to put it on Jesus. Mary and Martha, their faith was predicated directly on Jesus, and they knew what he was capable of. They knew what he could do. He was their friend. He was Lazarus' friend. And they just felt like if your baby would have came before our four days, he wouldn't have took two days off and relaxed. He was 15 furlongs from the blessing, which is under two miles. You can get to two miles in less than an hour if you walk fast enough or run. Some of us can do it in less than 30 minutes. I can't do that no more. I'll be done had a heart attack. Amen. <laughs> I could do it if I had to, but there had to be some money or God telling me you have to do it at the end of the race. And then I'll fall out. But I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, maybe. I think I, maybe I can't do it. But think about in this season, God's blessings, God's miracles, the miraculous power of Jesus. Think about how close you are. Close you are to your breakthrough. Close you are to making a difference in your life and somebody else's life if you just had more staying power, if you had more patience. How close are you to getting what God has for you? Only he can give you what we need, right? And we're just that close. And we say God may not come when we want him to, but he's always on time. But Think about the fact that he's there. He's everywhere at the same time. And two miles away is, is just as good as him being there. You can almost reach out and touch him. And if it's Jesus, you could really reach out and touch him. Because he didn't need to put his hands directly on people for them to get healed, delivered, and saved. In fact, you went down in Jesus' name. You was filled with the Holy Ghost. You prayed at the altar till the Holy Ghost came. You prayed and stayed with God. You believe he's one God. You believe Jesus has power in his name. And you got your miraculous eternal life. Amen. So think about the fact that he's there right now. And it ain't the fact that he uh, comes and he's on time. And you may not come with He's here. And our blessing is the fate of his divine appointment. 
Our blessing is his exact coming. It, 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 it's his exact timing. Amen. He's on time because he created time. So turn with me in your Bibles to John 3. You've heard of this before. John 3. St. John 3. Amen. God is good. Can you say God is good? Oh, man. His mercy endure forever. We have to know, we have to know, saints of God, that he is really good. He's really good. Now, I'm riding in my car. One day's a bad day. Well, not there ain't no bad days in, in Christian's life. But one day's a challenging day. The next day, the next hour is a challenging hour. The next hour is a breakthrough hour. And we thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God that all we have to do is think of him and his goodness and mercy. And say, oh, God is good. This ain't as bad as it seems. Hallelujah. Things are better. Look at somebody saying things are so much better. So much better than you think. Oh, sister. Oh, brother. Uh, go on, look at your mother, Tyrant, and say, oh, mother, things are really so much better than what it looked like. He looks like he could encourage her, don't he? Things are so much better than what you feel when it feel bad. But have you ever had that good feeling? You could be outdoors and the breeze come and you're in the shade and and I, I don't know why it feels like I'm having a good day, but it just feels good. God is on your side. Amen. I'm here to encourage you in the Lord. There's none good but the Lord, and there's no good days. There's no average days. There's no challenging days without God on our side. God makes the difference. I feel like having a little church this morning, but we'll do it the way God wants us to do it. Amen. Now, St. John 3, if you can stand to your feet and help me read St. John 3. I'm going to read very fast. Uh, i read very fast. Well, let's slow down because I don't have to read all of it. We know this story. And my, my mission from God is to give you all some good teaching, young people and, uh, and older people, middle-aged people. We're going to give you some good teaching from the pulpit, from Bible class, and we're going to try to get you in focus groups as youth more often. But I'm going to give you some good teaching because it's not all about having uh, the praise and worship part of preaching. But you got to have something that you can remember. Your prayers can get to the throne of grace when you need him. Amen? Amen. Help him, help him out. Help him out. Uh, let's read together. St. John 3. we got to get the knowledge. we got to get the knowledge. Amen. The academics of the Bible. we got to have that. Amen? Now, John 3, let's read it together. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh, are you with me? Come on. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that, that I say unto thee, he must be born again. Now let's pray that God unfolds this understanding to us. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the Nicodemus witness, for the Nicodemus teaching. We thank you, Lord, you can teach the ruler, you can teach the man of God, the woman of God that wants to come to you in the night, wants to come to you when nobody's looking, that doesn't want to be seen with you. you got a word for them. Lord, when we're confused and, and when we don't know where to turn, we can turn to you, unfold. Give us understanding. We're just going to thank.
thank you right now for all you've done. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your life, your death, your burial, your resurrection. Thank you for uh, your born again baptism in water and a spirit. Thank you, Lord. We pray that this word unfolds and that we get all the understanding that you want us to have. Lord, move somebody's heart to worship you, to praise you, to witness for you forevermore in a greater way. Move on somebody's soul. In the name of Jesus, I must be born again. I must be changed. Move on us, Lord. Help us, deliver, forgive us, and make us new creatures. Thank you, Lord. Somebody said hallelujah. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. You must be born again. So the name of this sermon is when, somebody say when, will the leader in you. And then preachers like to, they always repeat that twice. Let us do it two or three times, I guess. When will the leader in you. Amen. The titles are supposed to be shorter. Maybe four to seven words. So you can fill in the blanks. <laughs> when will the leader in you. A leader, a ruler, someone who gives orders. <clears throat> More specifically, a ruler is someone who gives orders. Someone who's over something, over a people, a land, a certain providence, over a, a, a governing officer, a ruler. A ruler, they give orders. A leader is someone who stands by his fellows and bears the difficulties with them. But a ruler gives orders. A ruler is diplomatic sometimes. There's tyrants, not tyrant, tyrants. <laughs> You've heard the comparison before, right? There's a difference between, but there's tyrants, there's dictators. And what they do is they give orders with no diplomacy, uh, with no sometimes explanation. They don't care. They give orders, this is the way it's got to be. But a diplom diplomatic ruler, one that uses wisdom, hallelujah, how do we want to put that? They consider how you think. They consider your thought process. They might even consider your feelings, your wants, and your needs. A diplomatic ruler gets the job done more ways than one. They just do. A diplomatic ruler, a ruler that has wisdom, doesn't mind working at night. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I see God's people coming in one by one, two by two. Amen. Oh, go ahead and fill the house, Lord. A diplomatic ruler doesn't mind burning the candle at both ends. Now, you gotta watch doing that because you run out of some, some uh, you run out of the wick, you run out of some gas, you run out of fuel. You gotta watch doing that. But a diplomatic, thoughtful, wise ruler sometimes has to work overtime. You gotta work overtime to get the job done. You gotta work overtime to find out more. When will the ruler in you. When? You got a ruler on the inside of you. You might be put over one person, which is yourself, in your lifetime. You might be put over two, twenty, or a thousand or more. But there's a ruler in you. When will the ruler in you? We're going to fill in the blanks maybe later, but you already know how to fill those blanks in. When will the ruler in you come to Jesus by night? Nicodemus apparently did not want to be 
seen asking questions of Jesus. My, 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 Holy Ghost. Nicodemus didn't want to be seen lumped in with God's people under the order of Jesus. You know, he, he thought he was already God's people. But not under the master's command. Not under the ruler's command. Just under the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Nicodemus, the ruler in him, had to lay aside the weight and the unbelief, the sin, the confusion that easily beset him, easily got him off track. The weight that kept him from serving Jesus in the daytime. Gonna mess with you today. Is there someone in here that had went to work or had heard someone speaking against God, had had an opportunity to bless somebody, but you didn't want to do God's will and speak up and bless somebody with your prayer or with your love or with your testimony or your witness? You said, I'll wait till tomorrow. It's kind of uncomfortable. It's kind of hot in here. If I speak up for Jesus now at this school, at this job, they're going to look at me funny and judge me and call me a Jesus freak. They're going to call me a, a person that is uh, holier than thou, a person that is pushing my beliefs off on them. I'm going to be quiet, but what about the world pushing their beliefs off on us? It's only pushing your belief off on them when they don't want to hear from you, but it's all right if you can talk. The devil has no problem speaking. He has no talk, problem running his mouth. It's just a, it's a fair, peaceful ground if you be quiet. Because I'm going to tell you, Jesus makes the difference in the conversation. And if he makes the difference in the conversation, there's also some turmoil, some unrest that will get stirred up. When you tell the truth, you make the devil a lie and the devil gets mad. The devil gets embarrassed. When will the leader, the ruler in you come to Jesus? Jesus said, as we said in Bible class, speaking about the resurrection and the life, I must work the works of them, of him that sent me while in his day, right before uh, in John, where he opened the man's eyes. But we use this as a reference in Bible class. He, in, in the daytime in your life is when it's time to work. And that's when the will of God is in you, and you're in him, and you call upon the God to do his will. The will of God, hallelujah, is your daytime. You have to do his work. You must work. It's an opportunity for you this week. Right now is an opportunity for you. There's an opportunity and a, a divine a date and time for you to do his will. When will the ruler in you step up and say, I got the power of God in me, and the power of God can help you too. You don't have to cuss all the time. You don't have to bring me down and everybody else down and say, shut up with you and your Jesus. When will the Jesus in you speak up and say, God will give you Joy, unspeakable joy. God will, my God in me, will make you talk better. My God in me gives me optimism and strength. When will the God in you, when will, when will the ruler in you? And God just said the ruler in you is the God in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The ruler in you, the leader in you, should be the God in you. The leader came by night. Didn't want nobody to see him. Nicodemus. How many times in your life? Let's just keep, just keep uh, stirring up that in you. Because I know we deal with this, or we have dealt with it, or do deal with it a lot in our lifetime. We had opportunity to speak up for God. Have you ever thought your opportunity to speak up for Jesus would have been a big blessing to you as well as 
the party involved as well. I used to, when I was at my old job, I used to, we got two TV, big old TVs in the back in the break room and one out, out in front. And you can put it on music, you can put it on whatever. They say don't put it on news, especially if there's something controversial. Put it on something that is good for advertisement. Amen. So in the break room, you can put it on whatever you want. And sometimes I'm going to say, I don't want to do this spitefully, but I want to do, yeah, if you're watching any of my coworkers, you, now you know what you already knew. But I don't want to do it spitefully, but I want to be a witness. Let me find that gospel station on direct TV in the 800s and put on some gospel music and keep on walking. <laughs> put on some gospel music and let's change the atmosphere in here. What if you have the opportunity? Don't miss your next opportunity. There's another opportunity you have. I'm getting all this from Nicodemus. There's, there's another uh, angle and another road we're going down this morning. The ruler in you come to Jesus by night, but you're seeking. You're here because you're seeking. And the Bible says, seek and ye shall find. You're here because you're ready to ask. Ask and you shall receive. You're here because, hallelujah, you're ready to knock. Hallelujah. The door shall be open. You're here because you are ready to inquire upon God and his goodness and his mercies. And you're, if you're ready, you're ready, you're ready to come to Jesus. And, and you can come to him by night because everybody don't always have to see you and Jesus still in a way in the valley, in the mountain, in the park in your closet, at home. Everybody don't have to see you and Jesus having a conversation. And for him to get to you, you must steal away and get some one-on-one -on -one time with him. But don't be ashamed of him. Amen. After he gives you what you want, your daytime is coming. Get to Jesus whenever you can. It might be night, it might be day. Whenever you can, get to him. Ask him and he'll tell you what you didn't even ask. Isn't it amazing? He started telling Nicodemus what he didn't even ask. He started answering questions. Let's, let's look at it and, 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 and see what God wants us to do with it. But while we're talking about the night real quick, James 4.10 says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And you might not feel like getting up. You might like feel like standing up. You might not have the strength. But if you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, he will lift you up. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. First Peter 5 and 6. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now, that's amazing. Talking about humility. Talking about the being base, talking about not having pride, but God lifting you up. Amen. God wants to lift you up, but he doesn't want to do it when you're high and mighty. When God lifts you up, you are not selfish. Can somebody say amen to that one? When God lifts you up, you're not selfish. You're not full of pride, but you're selfless. God will lift you up as much as you keep humbling yourself. As much as you keep allowing God to look at the better side of you that wants to look at him. God will lift you up. At nighttime, it was starting for Nicodemus. Amen. At nighttime. So, Jesus said that uh, he answered him. Nicodemus said, Rabbi, call him Rabbi. We know you're a teacher from God. I'm a ruler. I'm a ruler. But I got to come to you by night because you're the teacher. And he said, this is why you're a teacher. Remember what I say? No man can do these miracles that thou doest. Wow. No man can do these miracles. I think it might have been before in the timeline where he called himself the resurrection in the life and then raised the man from the dead. Four days 
gone. It was before he was raised from the dead. Three days gone. Now Lazarus was wrapped up. He was put in the cave. He had stuff over his face. He couldn't breathe. Gone for four days. But he said, uh, uh, all the things I've seen you do thus far, he said, you, no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Do you know we can do some of these miracles if God's with us? Amen. We can do some of these miracles in God's will with power if we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of the Lord. So Jesus said this. He said, uh, verily, 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 church, great in Jesus' tabernacle means truly, truly. I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot. Somebody say, he cannot. Say it like a preacher. Say, he cannot. He cannot. Oh, oh, come on, can he? He cannot see the kingdom of God. If you're not born again, if you're not changed, if, if, you, if, you, if you're not turned around, turned upside down, if you're not altered, born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. Somebody said, I'm born again. But I don't need to be baptized. Well, Jesus just said you need to be baptized of water and of spirit. If you're not born of the spirit, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Born of water and of spirit, you can't enter into in verse 5. Born means, what does born mean? We, we back in uh, elementary school. Born means to come into a new, into a place of existence as a result of birth. Life is existence. He's the resurrection and the life. Life is existing. Amen. And then we broke that down in Bible class. And, uh, but born means you, you can have a natural ability to do a particular job. You, you're born. You're arrived. Uh, born is having a specific nationality uh, when you become a citizen. Born. Birth is the emergence of a baby or other young from the body of its mother. The start of life as a physically separate being. Birth. Born. Jesus said, you must be born again. You got to be changed. There's a way that you're changed. The way that you're changed is that your heart is changed. Your mind is made up. Jesus changes you. The way that you change, part of the formality, part of the format, the routine, the gospel, the uh, 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 ordained routine is that you go down in water in Jesus' name. The ordained routine is that you have faith, you keep believing. The ordained routine is that the Holy Ghost is birthed in you. And it comes from the inside. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, the wind blow where it listed, and thou hear the sound thereof, but can't not tell whether it come and whether it goeth. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. He didn't say so is everyone who's born of water, the wind blow where it listed. The Spirit, the Holy the Spirit, the Holy Ghost is Numahasian. It's the wind of God. It's the voice of God. And it blows and it does exactly what, what he wants to do with you. And you can't tell what tongues you're going to talk in. You can't tell what type of power he's going to use you in. You have to have faith in his will. We can't tell the Holy Spirit what to do, but it blows on you how and where. You don't even know where to go if you prayed up. You say, Lord, send me and I'll go. God said, go bless the, the, the hungry. Send it out. God said, go pray for sister so-and-so and she might get the Holy Ghost. She might get healed. Send me, Lord, and I'll go. The wind blows. The Holy Ghost blows where it lifts. He was saying Jesus was talking some amazing, dynamic things. Some amazing things. But when it blows, you hear. You hear the sound thereof. You don't know where it's coming, where it's going. You don't give orders. When will the ruler in you come to Jesus? The ruler in you comes to Jesus and bows before his infinite wisdom when you realize that you do not make up your destination, but Jesus does. Hallelujah. Now, I thank God that he gives us our own volition. You get to choose what your profession might be. You get to choose who you're going to visit this afternoon. 
afternoon. You get to choose that. Wouldn't you rather choose that under the direction of Jesus? Amen. In his will, in the belief of who he is, and knowing that your steps should be ordered. The Bible says the steps, look at the step one, we got to do two steps of the righteous man. Uh, steps of the righteous woman are ordered. Your steps are ordered. The song says, my life is not my own. Your steps are ordered. Lord, take, take these steps for me. Help me take these steps. Be in these steps for me. When will the ruler in you be ordered by the Lord? Mm, when will the ruler in you mm, bow down to the ruler that Jesus is? Hallelujah. Your steps are ordered. When you understand and he gets in your spirit how God orders your steps and that the word is a lamp unto my feet. This Bible, if thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and it's a light into my path. When that gets on the inside of you, you'll feel stronger. Even when you was have average strong, you'll feel even stronger. When that gets in you, you'll feel even more confident. When you learn that his steps are ordering your steps, your steps, your destiny, your Holy Ghost, your power, is ordered by the Lord. Do you want your steps ordered by the Lord? I, I can't take a journey without you. Go back to Lazarus. Two miles away. But my steps are ordered, so I know Lazarus is going to get his breakthrough. Lazarus is going to come forth. Come forth. Forth means produce. Your steps are produced by the Lord. Your life is produced by the Lord. Mm, think about the produce in your life. The fruit. The good fruit. By Jesus. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus. Your produce, the fruit, is good fruit. It's not rotten. It's not the rotten apple that destroys and, and spoils the whole bunch. The produce, the good fruit in you. Amen. When will you come to Jesus? Uh, maybe Nicodemus missed the daytime and he wasn't quite ready for people to see him come to Jesus. But you've got to get a little bit uh, large, wide eye when you come to Jesus. And you're ready and attentive. You're ready for him to teach you of his commandments. You're ready for him to change your world. Lord, explain some things to me. Nobody else is doing these miracles. Explain some things to me. I got some questions in my life. It's time to come to him by day and by night. Nicodemus, uh, uh, Nicodemus said, if you're a woman, it's time to come to Jesus and ask and say, who are you? Inquire upon him. Ask him the most uh, detailed questions. You know you got some questions. Don't live this life and then leave the church and walk out of here and let somebody, let the snares or the fowler uh, pick you off and, and peck at you until you believe something different. But when will you come to him and say, Lord, how do you want me to list? And blow on me, Lord. Blow on me, Lord. I want to hear your sound. And your sound don't just come out of my belly, out of my mouth. Your Holy Ghost just don't come out uh, just for a show, just for me to feel better. But your Holy Ghost is produced in me, Lord, so that I'm changed, so that I'm happier, so that I'm on a mission for my Lord. I'm on a mission to help change the world. I'm on, my eyes are big and my ears are open, Lord. What else do you have to tell me? This is one of the mightiest things that Jesus, uh, his uh, witnesses that he did one-on-one -on -one because he wasn't a direct disciple. He wasn't a direct disciple. Let's wind this thing up. Luke 24.
23 says, And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and just. And John 8, 19, 38, and 39 says, And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, Arimathea being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. Joseph was another ruler. He was a counselor coming to Jesus in secret. When will your secret be let out? When will your nighttime turn to day? But you gotta have some intimate time with the Lord first. Let's look at another man. There was three, we were preached about one about two months ago. His name was Jairus. And Jairus uh, cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue in Mark 5 and 22 and 20 through 25. Jairus, he saw Jesus. He fell at his feet. He besought him greatly saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and she shall live. Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. Don't you know Jesus healed the man's daughter? This ruler of the Jew, a ruler of the synagogue, Jairus, was at his wit's end. He was desperate. We ought to be desperate for the Lord in our life one time or another. He was desperate and he came to Jesus. He didn't have time to say, this is my night time. This is my secret time, like Joseph of Arimathea. He said, this is my time to let everybody see me. I don't care what I look like. I don't care uh, how humiliated I am. I don't care how needy I am. Some people don't come to God, ask for prayers, and call me uh, because they don't want to feel needy. Sometimes you don't ask your friend for help because you don't want to feel needy. You don't want to feel like you're a burden. But when you need something for your loved one, when your daughter is sick, when someone needs to be raised from the dead, and you don't have time to be hiding, you don't have time to make it a secret. We want to praise God with all our heart, soul, and mind and cry out when we feel good. But when we don't feel good, when we feel humiliated, and when we feel confused, but we are ruler, and we, we're a little bit prideful, we want to sneak around and say, Lord, well, what is this she doing? You're doing miracles, man. You've got to be from God. Well, i got to come to you by night. But this man, Jairus, came to Jesus and laid in, and knelt down on his knees and said, help me, Lord, I know you can make the difference from what I'm going through. We are going through something and we're suffering and don't suffer alone is another subtopic. Don't suffer by yourself. Jesus will help you. But you've got to lay aside the weight of embarrassment. You've got to push to the back all oh, your embarrassment and, and the pride that you have. It's time to eat on God's change in your life.
Jesus, whether it's at night time. Like Nicodemus, you can come and he's going to give you the answer that you need in your life. Hallelujah. You can come to Jesus if you're Joseph or Ar Arimathea in secret. And, and in secret, you can be a ruler. When would the ruler in you step up and say, oh, Jesus giving me boldness and Jesus giving me a strength and Jesus gave me life and, and he is my resurrection in my life so I can speak out and get on my knees or jump to my feet if I will and say, Jesus, help me answer some questions in my life. Somebody say, answer the question, Lord. Answer the question, Lord. I dare you just to ask. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Lord, 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 will you answer the questions so that I can help myself help somebody else? I, I'm tired of suffering by myself, but you can change the way I feel. You can change my purpose. His purpose, this Nicodemus, was a ruler. His purpose was not to was not to say Hosanna when he walked down the street with everybody else. His purpose was not to lift up holy hands. His purpose that was not, so he thought, was to uh, uh, serve the God that had been predicted and the prophecy from Isaiah. Unto us a child is born, a son is given. But when you need some answers, God will change what you thought your purpose was and give you the real expedition for your life. My purpose is for my steps to be ordered before the Lord. My steps, he will order my steps. But you got to ask, when will you ask? When will you pull Jesus aside and say, it's me and you, Lord. I need some power going through this thing that I'm going through, Lord. I need some this joy going through it that I have. The world can't give it to me. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take my joy. But I see you're a man of miracles. I, I see you're a man of destiny. I see you are the teacher. I'm the ruler. But when will the ruler in you ask the master, help me, Lord? When will the ruler, there's a ruler on the inside of you. I'm looking at leaders out there. I'm looking at giants out there. I'm looking at humble decision makers and representatives. The Bible calls you an ambassador. When will the ruler in you step up and take your rightful place in the kingdom of God? Somebody said, right now, right now, I will do, my, do the Lord's work. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I will feed your sheep. Jesus said, keep my commandments. I will keep your commandments, Lord. When will the ruler in you walk upright? Jesus told Nicodemus in verse, uh, verse uh, 13, he said, No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Uh, and he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh, they call it Nahush time. When he lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, when they was getting sick, and Jesus said, uh, God told them, make this a rod and uh, make it like a serpent. And when the people look on it, uh, they'll get healed. Then they start getting healed and they start taking it for granted. They start worshiping it. Don't worship the creation. Worship the creator. So they start worshiping it and God had to change the order of things because their purpose got out of hand. And God said, no, Mother Moses, they called it Nehushtan. That means shiny things. They start worshiping things. You know, it's our tendency to sometimes worship man's creation, worship what we can see, amen, but the Bible tells us to walk by faith and not by sight, uh, and, and he said, if I told you earthly
earthly things, Nicodemus, 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 it's, uh, I believe, and ye believe not. How shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And you said, I'm a miracle worker. You said, I'm a leader, so listen to me. No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Even the Son of Man, even me, even Jesus, in the third person I'm talking, which is in heaven. He said, Moses, uh, and, and then 15 says, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. First he said, lift up the Son of Man, lift him up as they lifted up the serpent in the wilderness before they got out of hand. As they lifted up the servant, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. When will the ruler in you come to Jesus as you are? When will the ruler in you lift up the Son of Man that you might have eternal life? Your time is now. Lift him up in every way that you can. I'll give you 10 seconds in this church to go ahead and lift him up. You want some eternal life, don't you? You want some abundant life, don't you? Yeah, well, abundance is great life. It's many life. It's the life from Jesus. He is your resurrection and your life. If you lift him up as the Son of Man, be lifted. You'll have eternal Jesus. I want some eternal life. Life is Jesus. Jesus is life. Life is existence. Existence is birth. It happens at your birth. You must be born of the water, of the spirit. Go ahead and lift him up for the second time. Call on his name. Shout all over the church. Cry out. It's your night time to come to Jesus. It's your time from your secrecy. Oh, like uh, Joseph or Arimathea to come to the open. It's time for you to give the gyrus praise. Get on your knees. Do what you have to. You must be desperate. I want eternal Jesus. Life is Jesus. Jesus is life. We got to change the way we think and say, I don't just want abundant life. I want abundant Jesus running through me. He's above all. Jesus is in all and he's through all. I want him lively, active in my bones. I want him lively, moving through me. This church is a church of lively stones. He said, I'll have the rocks cry out. If you don't cry out, but my rock, somebody say, my stone, it's a lively stone. And it flows with the blood of Jesus. He's eternal. That means he's right now. He never ends in me. My life doesn't end. We just buried a friend of mine, Myron's cousin, one of the greatest musicians I know, G. LaRon Rainey in Kentucky. And he said, I decided to live. Cancel my funeral. I decided to live. So he did live at least a year longer. And Bishop Sean Tyson said the same thing that I said in Bible class. He said he is the resurrection and the life. And he said G. LaRon Rainey didn't die, but he lives forevermore. Your body has to come to an ending point at one time or another, but you shall have eternal life if you just believe on him. Somebody look at somebody and said, I shall not perish. My life shall not stop. I shall not cease to live. If as long as I praise the Lord, as long as I come to him by night, I shall not stop, but he shall live in me. And then let's everybody say John 3.16 together and go home. Come on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If he said, I didn't send my son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I might be saved. I come to Jesus at night. I must be saved. Tell me who you are, Lord. You're doing too many miracles. You're saving too many people. You're blessing too many sinners. You're bringing them into eternal life for me not to inquire upon you and say, I'm going to take this.
portion is the life. Somebody said, I got Jesus. I got life. I got abundance. Come to him. When will you? When will you? Somebody said, the time is now. Commission Lieutenant Gower said, the day is today. And you can finally say, I had enough. I'm going to come to you, Lord. I'm going to serve you with all my might. I'm going to trust you with my soul. I'm going to trust in you and not lean to my understanding. But the ruler in me is driven, is directed by the leader in you. Jesus is your leader. Give him a loud praise right now. Somebody said, lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I'm done ruling myself. You want to make me the ruler that you want me to be. Lead me, Lord. Give me your understanding. Your death is about me being baptized in Jesus' name. Your burial is about me being baptized. Your resurrection is about me receiving your Holy Ghost and Walking in it every day. Oh, leave me, Lord. I don't want to read the scripture and not get the understanding on the inside of me. Walk with me, Lord. We used to sing, walk with me, Lord. Oh, walk with me. We used to say, hold my hand, Lord. Won't you walk with me while I'm on this journey, hallelujah, my steps are ordered by the Lord. While I'm on this path, while I'm on this trip, I want Jesus to walk with me. Now, I don't want to be the only one having a good time. For about 10 seconds, help me give Jesus some praise. Because it's your nighttime. Cry out to the Lord and say, Master, Err is what Jairus said. Oh, Err, you're about, I'm about to lose my daughter. Err, oh Lord, are you desperate for him right now? Somebody said right now, Lord, turn my situation around. Change me, Lord, right now, help me. I'm going to listen to you. And my ruler in me, this has been ignited. Hallelujah. Put hands on somebody. Put your hand on their shoulder and tell them ignited. Say ignited. United in the name of Jesus. United because you ask and you shall receive. United. Hallelujah. You're a king. You're a priest. Amen. Hallelujah. You're woken, awaken. The Bible and Timothy says, stir up the gift. There's a gift in you right now. Otherwise, I would have let it go 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. But stir up the gift. I dare you to lift up your hands, shout hallelujah, and say, Lord, gift in me your purpose. Gift in me your change. Blow on me wind. Somebody said, 
Oh, please try. 